Hello students, this is a quick review on how to solve quadratic equations with the quadratic formula. Feel free to pause and take notes whenever it, you need to. Now, solving a quadratic equation means finding the x-intercepts. Now you should know that we also call the x-intercepts of a quadratic the solutions of a quadratic, so you might hear it either way. Here is the quadratic formula. The a, b, and c values come from the standard form of the quadratic function. To solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, we simply substitute a, b, and c into the quadratic formula and then calculate the value of x. So let's look at an example. Here we have a is 3, b is negative 5, and c is negative 2. So let's see what we get when we substitute those values into the formula. This is what I would write down on my paper to document my work. And you will notice that I always put the b value in parentheses. This is because I want to avoid making an arithmetic error and noticing, not noticing that it is negative negative 5 according to the formula and therefore it's going to end up being positive 5 and you know our calculators if I don't put negative 5 in parentheses when I square it I'm going to get negative 25 and that's going to lead you to a wrong answer. So write it down like this and then you'll know exactly how to put it in your calculator to solve it. So I'm going to take the next step and calculate what's under the square root. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but if you, if you don't have a perfect square under your radical, then you're going to have to back up and do this step anyway. So um, when I calculate uh, the values under the radical, meaning the negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 2, I get 49. Well, lucky for us, 49 is a perfect square. We know that the square root of 49 is 7. So I'm going to use that fact to further simplify my solution. Now I have 5 plus or minus 7 in the numerator. That's because I have two x-intercepts, therefore two solutions. So now it's time to separate those out. So I have the positive case. 5 plus 7 divided by 6, 12 divided by 6, that's going to give me x equal 2. So one of my solutions is x equal 2. The negative case, 5 minus 7 divided by 6 is negative 2 divided by 6. When I simplify that, I get negative 1 third. So my other solution is negative 1 third. Those are the two x-intercepts or solutions for this quadratic equation. Pause now and write down this example. Okay, let's look at an example two. Here, a is two, b is four, and c is negative nine. Now here's what it looks like when we substitute into the quadratic equation. Again, you notice that I always put my b value in parentheses to make sure that my arithmetic turns out right. So just like in example one, I'm going to calculate what's under the square root symbol first. So I put all that in my calculator and I get the square root of 88. So now I have negative four plus or minus the square root of 88 divided by four. Now, unfortunately, 88 is not a perfect square. So I need to see if I can simplify it. To do that, I'm going to factor 88. And here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for any factors that are perfect squares. Now, you know, right off the bat, I realize that 88 is divisible by 4. So 4 is a factor of 88, and 4 is a perfect square. If I factor 88 by 4, I end up with, 22. 22 is factorable by 2, 11, 
and 1, but none of those is perfect square. So I'm not going to go any further with 22. But here is what I do do next. I simplify the 4 under the square root. Take it out. It becomes a 2. That's because the square root of 4 is 2. So I can simplify that. And now it's just 2. Uh, now I have a, a fraction that I need to simplify to get my two solutions. So uh, I do the positive case first. I am not going to change this to some crazy decimal. I'm just going to simplify it. Uh, so I'm going to split this fraction up. Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. And 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. And so here's what I end up with. On my negative case, I'm also going to split it up. Negative 4 divided by 4, negative 1. And negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half. So here's my other solution. These are the solution to 2x squared plus 4x minus 9 is equal to 0. Now in both cases, example 1 and example 2, if I store the value of negative 1 um, plus 1 half times the square root of 22 into x and then check it using my calculator, I'm going to get 0. Same thing for this. This is how you can check. If you're unsure what I'm talking about, ask me in class about that specific thing. Now this is the end of this particular video. I didn't do a lot of examples. There are many, many examples that you can find on YouTube. I also did not go into simplifying radicals very much. If you are confused about that or confused about how to simplify answers, then you need to come to tutoring. Uh, next week, I am available for the first time on Wednesday. Don't forget, we have a long weekend. Um, at least that's true in 2018 this weekend. Don't know if I use this video other years. But uh, look on the tutoring schedule and see the first teacher who is available write down these problems and take them as examples so that you have a focus point for your tutoring session. Um, I'll see you in class. Peace out, people.